Hey there, Seth here. Um, I just want to make like a quick two part video on how you can get started with using Little Link. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Little Link is a do it yourself self hosted alternative to using online pay and freemium services like Linktree or Minilink. Um, or the thousand other variations that exist now um, that you'll typically find in someone's Instagram bio where it opens to a page incredibly similar to what you're looking at right now uh, that links to their social media handles, their online store, their latest podcast episode, you name it, unlimited possibilities, right? Um, but I, I kind of wanted to mention the biggest difference between those services um, and Little Link is Little Link does not have an online administrative section where you can go in, log in, and edit the button text, edit the links, edit the button colors, or any of that stuff. Um, so to use Little Link, you do have to kind of dive into the code a little, which can be overwhelming and daunting for some people. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to make this video, was so I can walk you through how you can get started with doing that without feeling overwhelmed uh, of doing something new um, and show you just how easy it, easy it can be. So um, for this video, we're going to focus on simply getting a little link copied, um, the, the repository cloned, um, and then deployed online as like an accessible website for everyone to get to. In part two, we'll dive into how you can actually edit Little Link to make it all about you, your buttons, your links, your branding, everything. Um, so we're just going to be focusing on the hard part in part one here, which is actually getting Little Link out in the world for everyone to see uh, your own version of it, right? So um, to do that, we're going to be using two things today, one of which is GitHub. Um, there's other services you can use like GitLab or Bitbucket, um, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be using GitHub. Um, so if you're new to this, you can head over to github.com and create your account. You'll need that um, to also set up the second part here, which is Vercel. Um, there's also alternatives to Vercel, but I love both these services. That's what we're going to be showcasing here in this video today. So um, I'm going to just go back over here to the Little Link homepage. This is just littlelink.io. Um, and we have our demo page here with all of our links. You can head over to our GitHub repo to download that and fork that, do whatever you please. Um, but if you're here to kind of learn how you can get this deployed to Vercel, we're going to be focusing on the second button here, which is deploy with Vercel. So you can go ahead and click that. And we're going to go, it's going to pop us over to the Vercel website where um, we can start with our deployment. So uh, to get started, we have to log in with GitHub down here. Um, it's just going to automatically log me in because I was already signed in to GitHub on this computer. It's going to pull up my Vercel account. You can see the account here and the project name. So just to kind of show you how customizable a little link can be, um, I'm going to remove pretty much every every little bit of little link branding from this entire process. So you, uh, so you can see just how you can make it your own. Um, also for this project, I bought the URL seth.fail. Um, I thought that would be fun. So we're going to use that for everything. So um, for the project name, I'm just going to type in seth.fail. Um, hit continue here. So this next step, we're actually going to be creating the Git repository. Um, so we'll be hitting GitHub here again. This pulls in my GitHub account um, and automatically populates the repository name. I already have a little link um, repository in my GitHub. So I'm also going to change this to the project name from earlier, seth.fail. Um, and this is just going to be copying the code from the little link repo and putting it in your own repo. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and make this private. Uh, that way I'm the only one that can access the, uh, the code in this repo. So um, now it's asking you what you would like to import into that repository. We want everything. Uh, and by default, everything is selected, which is little link root. Um, so we're just going to hit continue here. And uh, this is just asking for you know, the project details for your Vercel deployment. 
Um, we also don't need to touch anything here. If you want to give it a new name, feel free. It's just pulling the project name from earlier, but we don't need to touch the framework preset, the root directory, uh, the builder output settings, or the environment variables. So we can just hit deploy. Um, as soon as we hit deploy here, it's going to create that GitHub repository in your GitHub account for you automatically. It's going to copy the code from little link automatically, and it's going to get all of this uploaded into Vercel. Um, clone it, upload it, and deploy it uh, via Vercel's services. Um, it's already done here with a static build. So um, woohoo, congratulations. Your project has been successfully deployed. So this is like the hard part. This is getting the service online and accessible by others. Um, so super quick, if we hit visit, um, this is it. This is like the default index.html that's included with little link um, repository. Um, as you can see here, here's our project name, seth.fail.vercel.app. Uh, um, so this is like your own version of this repository deployed um, to Vercel and live for everyone on the internet to get to. Um, I'm going to point out a few things with Vercel before we do part two of this video, though. So I'm going to go ahead and open the dashboard here. Um, I just want to point out some of the basics. So here's the project name that you picked earlier. Uh, I picked seth.fail. This is the repository that it created within your GitHub account automatically. So we're just going to click that and open it, go to it so you can see. Um, this is all the little link code that automatically pulled it in here um, for you. And also left the little link readme. Um, if you set your repository to private, like I did, you'll have this little private tag, which means you're the only one that can see anything happening here. Um, so it is good to point out that that GitHub repository is now automatically connected to what's happening here with Vercel. Um, so you won't really have to touch any of that ever again, which is awesome. Um, so everything's going to be just kind of managed here in Vercel. Um, you can see... Uh, the deployment, the current deployment, the domain names attached to it, um, the current state, when you created it ago, so that was a minute ago, and the branch it's currently pulling from. Um, but you can also hit view domains here. Um, this is where you can add your own custom domain um, to this deployment and this project through for sale. So if you want to, if you already have a domain and you want to add like a subdomain here, um, you can do like links.yoururl.com. Um, or you can purchase something new. Um, if you don't have a domain name and you want one, I'd recommend using Google Domains or Namecheap. Um, they're both great providers. Um, but yeah, that's that's really the basics here. So we're not going to really dive into anything else in Vercel. You don't really need to know it to get any of this done. Um, that's, that's that. So in part two of this video, we're going to show you how you can edit this little link deployment. Um, to make it your own, we'll add your own branding, your own buttons, your own links, um, and we'll get that redeployed back through um, Vercel, and we'll go from there. So a huge congratulations to you if you um, followed along and deployed your first little little your first little link um, deployment online and made it live for everyone in the world to see. Um, so we'll see you in part two on how you can actually dive into that code a bit and get it edited for your brand. Thanks.